Hello and welcome to SAS Bootcamp week three, video six. In this video, we are going to stay with our reading across rows first and last operators functions. Uh, and I'm going to show another example of how to utilize this. Uh, I understand that first and last operators can be a little confusing. Um, I'm hoping that the whiteboard using the handles and the buckets are a good way to understand this. Um, if this is not very clear to you, please tweet at me and I can help repeat some of these concepts uh, this Friday during our Q&A video. Uh, but please let me know. I would like to hear feedback on this. Um, next, I want to show another example of doing the same thing, uh, but with a little bit of twist here and there, and I want to demonstrate an example. This time, I want to use the Poke underscore example data set, expanded data set. Before I begin anything, rule number one, sort your data set, right? So I'm going to say proc sort data equals class expanded. And I want to sort my data set by two variables this time, type underscore one and type underscore two. If you remember, type underscore one and type underscore two were um, Pokemon type variables, right? So it's type one has things like uh, bug and fire and grass and all those things and type 2 has the same things but type 2 may or may not be present in each row so i'm just gonna first uh, i need an out option um, i first run that let's take in a second okay so see, I've got now, now the data set is sorted. So now I've got all these bug Pokemon with no type two. And then I've got the bug electric Pokemon, the bug fighting, bug fire, bug flying, bug grass, bug ground, poison, so on and so forth. And then I've got dark Pokemon, so on and so forth. Right? It's sorted alphabetically. Uh, next, what I want to do is I want to write a bit of a program to calculate total HP within each Pokemon type. Okay. So let me write my data statement, data work dot total HP set poke underscore expanded. I'm gonna try and bring this up to the front of the screen here. Okay. Um, first thing I wanna do is I wanna write my by statement, type underscore one, type underscore two. So I'm, I'm going to type it exactly as that, that by statement in the sort procedure. Now, in here, because we have two variables in the by statement as opposed to one, we can do first dot and last dot variables for the type one and for type two. So let me go ahead and type in that really quickly. First underscore type one equals first dot type underscore one. Last underscore type one equals last dot type underscore one. Then I want to do the same thing for type two. And I want to show you guys what this looks like before we do anything, right? Whenever I use first and last dot variables, the first thing I'll do is I'll set these variables and then I'll open and look at my data set because I want to see those handles. I want to see those buckets. And once I see the handles and buckets, then, then I can visualize what I want to do or how I can get what I exactly need out of this data set. Uh, let me hold on to only the variables I want to here. So I don't have to scroll back and forth. Okay. All right. So you'll see now if I scroll right here. Okay. So now the the type underscore one. Right, the type underscore one, this bucket begins here for bug and it goes all the way down to here. Right, so you'll see that the first handle for the first dot type underscore one is right here where it is equal to one. And then the, the end handle of that bucket is right here where last underscore type one equals one. Everything else is zero. So everything else in between type one is zero. Everything else in between last dot type one is also equal to zero. That's my bucket for my type one. Right, and then my next bucket for type one is a dark type, where this is first dot type one, the beginning of the dark bucket, and the end of the dark bucket is right here, last dot type one. Now, I actually have 
two types of buckets in this data set now because I have two sorted variables. Because in my by variable, by statement, I have two variables, I have two types of buckets. I have this first dot and last dot bucket for the type one variable, but I have then the first dot and last dot type for the type two variable. For the type two variable, bucket one begins here and then ends here. Bucket two for type two begins here and ends here. Let's look at that. So for type type two, you'll see that bucket one begins here at the very first row and bucket that bucket ends right here for the last row where the type two variable was just missing. And then if you scroll further for electric, which is bug electric, type first dot type one is one for the first time electric happens and, it, and last dot electric is one for the last time electric happens. So what I have here is I have buckets nested within each other because type one, because these are all bug type Pokemons and these are all subtypes within bug type Pokemons, my type one bucket will give me the bug bucket, the dark bucket, the fire bucket and so on. The type two variables buckets actually give me subtypes nested within that bigger bucket. So I now have a bug bucket, which is my bigger bucket, but within that bucket, I have a bug electric bucket, a bug fighting bucket, a bug fire bucket, a bug flying bucket, and so on and so forth, right? So I have buckets nested within each other. So now I can choose how I want to do what I want to accomplish. If the goal of my program is to calculate total health points, total HP, well, am I interested in doing that within my bigger bucket or my smaller bucket? Do I want to calculate total HP within all bug Pokemon? Or do I want to get real specific where I want to say, what is the total HP for bug electric Pokemon? What is the total HP for bug fire Pokemon, bug fighting Pokemon? And I can use a smaller nested bucket. Right? I have the ability to do either one because I sorted my data set by two variables. Um, so let me go ahead and show how to do this. And this is going to be very similar to what we did earlier with the earthquakes example. I'm going to retain a variable called total HP. Let me do total underscore HP. Right? Um, and then I'm going to set total underscore HP to be zero. Sorry, I'm going to I'm going to have total HP to be restarted for every new bucket that begins. Uh, for now, let's just do the bigger buckets, right? So type one. Um, so I'm going to say if first underscore type one equals one, then total underscore HP equals health points. But if first underscore type one equals zero, so if it is not the first time the bug Pokemon is happening, then total HP should just be previously retained value of total HP plus the HP in that row, right? Um, let me see. Okay. Uh, I'm going to write a keep statement. So I only hold on to the variables I need and I don't need every single variable. I need the ID variable. I need type one, I need type two, and then I need first underscore type one, last underscore type one. my total HP variable. I don't need any other variables for this. Okay. Oh, looks like I made an error. Oh, oops. It says syntax are expecting one of the following. That's because I think I forgot a then statement after my if. There you go. Let me check my log. Log looks good. Output data set. Okay, so now within my bug type, in this bucket, here's my bucket's beginning handle, and the bu bucket's ending handle is right here. But I see the one in that last underscore type one column. I've got, oh, I, I should have retained the HP variable. Give me a second, I forgot that. I type HP here. One more variable I need to retain just so that we can see if the code worked or not. Okay, so this is the HP. What I'm doing is I'm just going to sum across this HP column across all these different rows, right? Within each bucket. So you'll see here, I'm going to, for this purpose, I'm going to remove these two variables because I don't think I need them. Um, 
Okay, so you'll see here total HP is 45 for the first occurrence of bug in the data set where first underscore type one was one. For the next row, SAS retained the value of total HP from the previous row, which was 45, and then added it to the value of HP in this row plus 50. 45 plus 50, 95. And then for the next row, SAS retained total HP again, and then added 95 to 65, and we got 160. Right? And then uh, it kept doing that. It kept retaining this value of total HP from the previous row and adding the value of HP in that row over and over and over again until we came to the end of my bug bucket. The end of my bug bucket is denoted by the handle one in the last underscore type one column. And there we have a total HP of 3925. I'm fully aware that an HP of 3925 for bug is probably meaningless at this point. And right? what does that number even mean to just add HP across all the bug type Pokemon? I get that it's meaningless, but stay with me here because I'm trying to demonstrate how you can do these things in SAS. Um, but so for the last, for the, for the handle where the bucket ends for the bug type Pokemon, uh, the total HP is 3925. For the next row, we are beginning a new bucket. I know it's a new bucket because the first underscore type one is equal to one. And in this case, what have we said in the code? We've said if first underscore type one equals one, then total HP should just be equal to HP. So here, total HP is 95, which is the value of HP. And then for every row after that, SAS retains the value of total HP and then just adds it to the HP in that row. So 95 plus 35 is 130. And then 130 gets retained, gets added to 70, and we get 200. And then 200 gets retained, gets added to 65, and goes up to 265, and so on and so forth. Right? So we can add all of the HP values within the bug type Pokemon bucket in order to get this total HP variable. Now, this is an efficient way to do this. There are some other ways to do this though. Uh, I previously explained how instead of using the retain statement with the with this one, instead of that, you can just use the sum statement. I'm not going to show how to do that here, but that is totally doable, right? You could have, instead of writing all of this, you could have just written, you could have removed the retain statement and you could have written total HP, total underscore HP plus HP. And that would be the sum statement in this case. But, but for now, I'm not going to show that. Uh, using the retain statement and this sum operator, we've accomplished our objective of adding HP across all of the rows within a given bucket. Now, there are a couple other things I can do here to make my program more efficient. Having these rows of data, these four variables that I created is super useful, uh, at least as you're beginning to learn this concept because you can then look at the data set and see those variables, see where your bucket begins, see where your bucket ends, and how the variables in between, uh, how, see how all the rows in between those two handles can be summed or added or counted or whatever you want to do, right? Uh, but you don't need that stuff. What you can do instead is you can just type that. So what I have here, this first dot type underscore one, I can just take that and I can type it right here, right? Um, and I can type it right here. So I don't need to do this this way. I can just say if first dot type one equals one, if first dot type one equals zero, instead of creating the variable name. The disadvantage of doing this is that I can't go in the data set and look at my handles visually and being able to look at those handles on the buckets uh, helps me understand the code. But if you get to a point where you are super familiar with setting these handles and these buckets, then you can just skip that part. In fact, not only can you skip that, you can even skip this equal one part, right? When you skip that equal one part, what SAS is thinking is that if first dot type one, meaning if the first occurrence of that variable type one. So, so the equal one part is implicit. And instead of writing equal zero, you can just say if not first dot type one. And it is saying if it is not the first occurrence of the bug Pokemon in the data set. So this is another way to do the same exact calculation we just did, but we didn't create the variables. Uh, excuse me. I, I'm going to I'm going to comment this piece of code out because we don't need the variables anymore, right? We directly use the functions here. I'm going to comment it out and then I'm also going to have to take this out of here. So now the code worked, log looks okay. And now you'll see I have my bug type HP, total HP, and total HP is doing the same thing within my bug bucket. 
total HP is getting added across rows. So 45, 45 plus 50, 95, 95 plus 65, 160, 160 plus 50, 210, so on and so forth, right? So it's doing the same exact thing. Now it is doing with those first dot and last dot variables being hidden. It's not displaying the handles. So I have to visualize my buckets based on the value of the variable within type one. Um, and using the first dot type one without the equals one and the not operator, basically accomplish the same thing as I had earlier. Now, the only thing I haven't done is when you do this, you usually, when you are creating these buckets, your end goal is always to get to a data set where there is only one row of data per bucket, right? Because once you are adding up these things, the total HP for the bug bucket is basically this number 3925. And if I am retaining all these other rows in the data set, that just gets confusing. I just want to know that 3925 is the total HP for bucket. So if I want to do that, I can just say if last dot type underscore one, then output. And I get the same exact thing. But in this case, I'm actually going to not retain the HP variable. I just need to see the total HP variable. Run my log and there it is. So now for my bug bucket, I see that the total HP is 3925. For my dark bucket, the total HP is 2071, so on and so forth. Now there is a value in this type two variable, but that value is actually meaningless, right? Because this value just happens to be whatever was in that column for the last row for the bug bucket and whatever was in that column for the last row of the dark bucket. But that is meaningless now because I am defining my buckets as per type one variable, so not as per type two. So if you want to avoid confusion, just take out that type two variable from your keep statement. Right. So if you do that, there you go. So for now I have one row of data per each bucket. There are 18 different buckets in this data set from bug Pokemon to dragon Pokemon to there is some uh, cutting off going on here. Drago means dragon, normal Pokemon, steel Pokemon, water Pokemon. And now I've summed up the HP and I can look at this data set and say, okay, so water type Pokemon have more total HP than any other Pokemon in this data set. And then the next biggest, uh, Pokemon type is uh, grass Pokemon. Huge drop off from 8,000 to 4,000. Well, no, normal type Pokemon, 7,573. Um, you can make these comparisons. Remember though that each bucket did not have the same number of rows. So the number of Pokemon within each uh, type are not the same. There are probably more water Pokemon than any other Pokemon which is contributing to that number. So be careful with your interpretations in this example, but it still demonstrates what we wanted to show, which is, how to calculate total HP within each bucket. Now, I wanna quickly change this, and I wanna say, let's do this for the smaller nested buckets, right? Let me change type one to type two, and we'll look at how it does the same operation, but for the smaller bucket. So instead of just looking at all bug, bug, bug type Pokemon, we have bug only Pokemon, bug fire type Pokemon, bug and electric, bug and flying, bug and fighting, whatever we want, right? So it's the same piece of code. I'm not changing anything. I'm just changing these first dot variables to type two instead of type one. And type two, remember, is my smaller nested bucket. Log looks okay. Output data set, look at that. So this is bug only Pokemon. Total HP is 902. Bug and electric, 120. Bug and fighting, 160. Bug and fire type Pokemon, 140. Bug and ghost type Pokemon, just one for some reason. Um, must be a really weak Pokemon there. Um, and then you can also get these subtypes, right? So you have the fire only type Pokemon, fire and dragon type Pokemon, fire and fighting, so on and so forth. And you can keep going down that road, down that list there. Um, what we've done is we've read across rows and we've done arithmetic. We've done some, we've added across these rows based on buckets which were defined using handles. And the handles we use, for the first dot and the last dot operator. I hope that's helpful. If you have any questions, if you want me to repeat anything or show another example, uh, hold on and watch the exercise video, but also tweet at me and I can try and include a different example for our Friday's Q&A video. Uh, the earlier you tweet at me, the more opportunity I'll have to uh, try and get another example ready before our Friday video. So if you have questions, please let me know.